The second small pack that I have in here, it's got a little space out here that I've not utilized. I probably would throw a couple band-aids and a, a thing of Vaseline in there for my lips. But inside I've just got a couple little things. I've got a sharpener and I've also got a sharpening rod. Then I've also got some dental floss which I like to carry and I've got an entire sewing kit. This sewing kit has some needles, some wax thread, a couple of easy all needles, it has a few safety pins, a little more wax thread, a couple of large, a couple of small nails, and then a couple of twist ties just for quick repairs. Uh, maybe about 60 foot of paracord and I can actually take the sheaths off of them and I can use the inside cord for things like fishing. I can use them for tying things together, making any kind of lashings that I need as well. The other two items that I'm carrying in this kit right now are my Gerber saw. You've seen this on other videos. This is just a short little saw and again uh, this is a couple of dollars. I think it's about 10 or 12 dollars. Very inexpensive and I'm carrying a flashlight. This is actually a mag light. Got a good bright light on it but it allows me to be able to get around if it's dark and I don't want to light that candle. A couple of more utility items that I have. Just a spoon. We showed this in another video. That goes with my billy can and helps me to be able to eat. You know another thing about this spoon. A lot of people have commented about my bow drill and, and the knife that I have that I generally carry. You know I could put this spoon in my hand and use this as a handhold and it will work very well. So a spoon's a pretty good thing to carry. And then also I have a knife. This is just a uh, Gerber and it's a good utility knife. So here is an entire kit folks that you can do and you don't even have to have a backpack. Alright so let's pack this all back up and show you an effective way to pack tightly and easily. I take my shirt and I'll roll my saw blade in there. The reason I do that is so it doesn't cut through the bag. By the way when you're packing it's much better to roll clothing than it is to uh, try to fold it in there. It's going to roll up smaller and it'll fit in better and get into a tighter space. So we'll just put the shirt in there, throw the two bags in here with my gear and my knife. And again this is an extra knife, a spoon, and they just slide right in there, throw my socks in the outside. And then I'll tie that stuff sack down. Now the reason I put my socks on top is because I, I want to change my socks when I'm out in the bush at least once a day. I don't want to get uh, you know sore feet. I don't want to get any kind of problems with uh, foot fungus or with some kind of moisture on my feet that would cause blisters. So I do tend to change my socks when I'm out in the bush if I'm hiking a long way. But there we go. So we got the stuff sack. And that's packed out and again you can see there's still a lot of room in there if I needed other gear in there that's plenty. Now what I'm going to do is just show you how to wrap this all back together because if you want to make a bedroll like this well then it's going to be good to know how to wrap it together isn't it. So again I'll just open up my things so that they lie as flat as possible. First I put my tarp in then I put my poncho and then I will go ahead and lay my stuff sack with my gear in there. Now if you want to you can use a longer stuff sack and then you'd have a little bit more room and that would be okay because you're still going to have this bedroll rolled up. What I do after that is I fold in these edges and what those edges do and I'll wipe all the junk off of here as much as possible keep it kind of neat and I'll fold this edge over as well those edges will actually keep my gear from falling out on me as I'm traveling. This is a very important thing. Some people just put their bedroll in and they uh, leave it open. If you do that, what's going to happen is your gear is going to tend to shift as you're walking because you're going to see in a minute when we roll this up that this is actually uh, sideways on my body. And I don't want that to roll off and to lose everything out of there. So I fold those edges in to keep things from sliding in and out. The next thing that I do is to come up and just put this end over the entire thing. And so I've enveloped all of my gear 
inside of my bedroll, inside of my blanket. Then I just start to roll. And as I do, again, keep it as clean as possible. And you'll see that everything will conform into this kit. Now once I get up here a little bit, kind of near the end, what I'm going to do is to take my braided cordage and show you how to put that in here. What I'm going to do is I've untied my closure knot here and I'm going to lay the long end out to one side and the short end to the other and I'm going to keep rolling up my bedroll. Just keep all that junk off it and when I get to the end I'm going to fold this flap over and then I'm going to roll it down into there. Now, we basically got that pretty well finished, so what we're going to do is take our two cords back out of our canteen, and remember these little loops that I have on here? What I'll do is I'll put one loop on, and you'll see that when I pull the cord through, it goes toward the camera. I'll take the other loop, And I'll put that on the opposite side, and that will actually go away from the camera so that these two loops are facing in opposite directions. Pull our cord through there, and we'll just get that around there, and then we'll tighten that down. Now I can cinch these ends down real good, and again, that'll help anything from fallen out of there and then I just wrap I begin to wrap right around my blanket roll and I'll just wrap until I get about to the center and I'll do the very same thing the opposite way and just wrap it around five or six times so all is tight and good in there and then at the end here I'll just go over and I'll make a square knot and that's all that I need to hold this in place it's a little square knot you can tie any kind of knot on there you want but we'll just tie a square knot on there for now okay so now we've got our blanket roll laid back out we have our short end we have our long end and what I'm going to do is just tie a little knot here I just tend to use a double sheet bend here and that keeps that cordage on there nice and tight for me. And you can see that over in our knot video, the double sheet bend. And that won't slip out on me when I'm using it. Okay, then I can pull that in so that I have all this nice cord out here. And what I'll do is take some of that length out of there by just tying a simple overhand knot. And that gives me the cordage that I can use roll this over and on the back end now this is going to be my top up here is going to be my top so what I want is for my canteen to hang down like this so I'm going to go ahead and put my canteen in this way through a couple of those cords flip it over and just lock it down well I hope you've enjoyed this episode of bushcrafting on a budget and again it goes to show you folks that if you want to go out for three day, five day, even if you had to go out permanently on a trip, you don't have to buy expensive gear. You can get along with what you have there at home. You know a lot of things I could have replaced here that would have saved so even more money. think outside the box. Figure out what you can do on the budget that you have and join us again for another video real soon. Have a great day.